morning. Before I start my 100 projects for the day, I wanted to talk about this uh, instant, small instant hot water heater that I installed over in the cabin over here. And I'm gonna talk to you about the past couple of years I've been dealing with this issue and researching, and I found out why it's a good idea or not a good idea to get one of these. So here we go. Hey guys, so when it comes to these instant hot water heaters, first of all, I'll build a page and I'm gonna list the three that I like. But I would, call, I would say that there are sort of three classes in this. And you have to only understand a couple of things. The first thing you need to understand before I forget this, your temperature of the incoming water does have an impact on the performance of these things. And matter of fact, if you go and look at manufacturer's charts, they'll show you if your incoming water is 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, because you're only going to be able to move your water, let's say 20 degrees or 25 or 30 degrees based on the flow. So before I forget that, it does have an impact. However, the other main things that are going to have an impact we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the amount of power watts that these things use. We're going to talk about amps in your breaker box, and we're going to talk about gallons per minute. And when we talk about the gallons per minute, you have to understand, you have to understand plumbing math. And what do I mean by that? Modern day kitchen faucets and bathroom faucets pull about 1.5 gallons per minute. Got it? 1.5. Showers typically are about 2 or 2.5 gallons per minute. Modern day showers are 2.5 gallons. So here's what you need to understand. If someone's taking a shower, they're going to be pulling 2.5 gallons per minute. If someone turns on a faucet, they're going to be pulling 1.5. So what's that add up to? So now you got almost, you got 4 gallons per minute. So if you have a hot water heater that's rated at 1.5 gallons per minute, it's not gonna it's not gonna supply enough water. And so that's where you sort of calculate your gallons per minute. Now, I was able to put this little tiny one over in here because that little cabin, one person might stay over there twice a year. And the reason why I wanted, I had a large full tank water heater over there. And why did I wanna replace that? Because someone's only over there once or twice a year. And the water, I drain it out, but still there's going to be a little bit of water rotting down at the bottom. And in the wintertime, I'm not going to heat that place, so that may freeze. So I want to get rid of that big tank. Plus, it also opened up that water heater closet is now a linen closet. There's all kinds of space in there. So one of the reasons why I can do it is there's going to be one person. That person is going to be running a faucet. And I have a two-knob shower system. And what does that mean? So let me show you. Um, a quick video of what a lot of people have and I have on most of mine, which is that one knob. So it's in an off position and when you turn it on, the water flows fully. So, but you can vary with how much hold, how much cold and how much hot. But the one thing you can't really vary is you can't vary the gallons per minute. So once it's on, it's on. But like over here with the two faucets, I can just turn the hot water on and the hot water will flow at 2.5 gallons per minute out of this shower head over here. However, because it's a two knobber, I can actually slow down that water flow and make it like 1.5. Does that make sense? So because it has those two independent knobs on it, just like the old kitchen sinks, you know, you turn on your hot water or turn on your cold water and you can, you can vary how much it wants to come out. But a lot of these showers don't have that ability. You don't have the ability to control the amount of gallons per minute. I do over here. So what I'm able to do is I'm able to turn the hot water, turn just hot water on with this little tank. And if it's not warm enough, I can just tone it down just a little bit to the point where um, it's actually really, really nice and warm over in that shower. So uh, these, if I have a one point, if I have this tiny little thing, it's only going to be able to heat water up for the amount of time that that water is inside there. So if you slow down the water flow, the water spends more time in this system and comes out hotter. So if I set this to 135 degrees and I go over to my sink, which is 1.5 gallons, and I turn my sink on, the hot water comes out, I put my hand under it, I can't keep my hand under it, it's so hot. However, if I go into the shower and I turn the shower on full, and I go over there, it's like, yeah, it's kind of lukewarm. I mean, I could take a shower in there, but if I turn that down a little bit, instead of 2.5, maybe bring it down to about 1.5 or two, now it starts to get really warm. So when you slow down the flow, you're gonna get hotter water. Got it? That's one of the first things. So uh, when you do this math calculation on the size that you need, 
if you just like if you're in a studio apartment if you had a cabin this little teeny water heater would work great just understand that you're going to have to have if you have that variable flow in a shower now what happens when you go to when you want to step up maybe like at the beach house and you have a shower someone turns on the faucet and then someone's running the the dishwasher i mean then you got a problem now you need to go up to probably at least a 3.5 gallon per minute so you have to sort of add up those things. Someone's taking a shower, someone's using the faucet, or someone's doing laundry. You need to add up those gallons that are being used, and that's why you're gonna be at a 3.5 or a 4.5 for a full house system. Here's the problem with these things. If you have gas, propane, natural gas, whatever it is, these things are phenomenal. It, I would replace any tank I had, any tank I had with a gas one, they work phenomenal. With electric, there's a huge amount of power draw. So that 1.5, that little one, well, first, before I go there, a regular tank water heater has two coils in it. It has an upper coil and it has a lower coil. This is, I'm generalizing, most of them have them this way. So it has an upper coil and a lower coil. That upper coil is gonna fire off first and it's mine is 3,800 watts. That's where the hot water is and it's gonna help superheat that hot water while someone's running a faucet. Once that water starts to get cool, the bottom water heater, this shuts off and the bottom one will turn on. And then that hot water will rise to the top. That's how those water heaters work. So they have two coils, but the coils only fire one at a time, as far as mine goes. Some, maybe some fire both. So I'm using 3,800 watts at, on that heater. Now, I will say this, the benefit of a full tank water heater is that it stores hot water. And this is a great lesson to learn. Hurricane Helene, we were down at the beach house, we lost power, and I told the wife, do not use hot water. Do not turn on the hot water. I don't care what you're doing, make sure it's cold water. And why is that? And she was like, why are you being so, I said, just trust me. 24 hours went by and we hadn't taken a, we weren't be able, we couldn't take a shower. We didn't do anything. Well, the next morning we woke up after the power went off and we were able to take hot showers. Both of us were able to take like a five minute quick hot shower because water tanks are very efficient nowadays on storing that hot water. So if you shut off your water tank and you turn on your hot water, leave it for 24 hours and turn it on, you're gonna have pretty hot, very warm or even hot water in that tank still after 24 hours. That's one of the benefits of that, that it stores it a lot. When it comes to these tankless, obviously you don't. There's no, there's no water storage in there. But let's talk about the, the wattage those coils in there now you have that little teeny one i have is pulling 8000 watts <laughs> that little so that little teeny 1.5 is pulling 8000 watts when you go up to the 2.5 gallon you go to 11000 watts when you go to a 3.5 you go to 13000 watts that's a lot of watts i mean consider a window air conditioner unit is going to pull about 800 watts Okay, 800 watts. A microwave, 1,200 to 2,000 watts. It's a huge amount of watts that it's pulling. So, especially if you're running a generator, that's that's kind of hard on a generator. Those, those these electric water, these these instant hot water heaters. But you also have to look at your panel. Now, down at the beach house, one of the reasons why I decided not to go with it because my panel was basically full, and I'd have to make a whole bunch of room because if I wanted a 3.5 you know the double breakers, the 240 double breakers that are in your box? Not the single 120s, but the doubles? They want 240s servicing a 13,000 3.5 gallon. So you're gonna have to have two 40 amp breakers to serve that one 3.5 gallon. Now a regular water heater is gonna be one double pole 30 amps. For the small one that I put in, they wanted one breaker that was 40 amps. So I had to increase, I had to buy a new breaker from my old water heater, which was 30 amps, and to go down to this little tiny water heater that's pulling a lot more watts, and I had to put in a 40 amp breaker. If you jump up to the 2.5 gallon, that's gonna draw 11,000 amps, and you need to put in a 50 amp breaker. If you go up to the 3.5, now you're gonna have to have two 40 amp breakers in there. So. That was one, that's one of the limiting factors, I think, when it comes to these instant hot water heaters, as far as the power. It's a big power draw. 
I mean, 3.5 gallons per minute, that can probably serve a normal house. But dude, that's 80 amps worth of breakers, and that's 13,000 watts every time that things kick on. Now, understand, it's not running all the time. So anyways, just keep in mind, if someone had a question about that, what water heater did you install? You really have to understand the fact that I can do that over here because I have the double faucets, the old style faucets. I'll take you over there in a second and I'll show you. Um, I don't have that single faucet and it's, you know, a one person type thing. I don't have a dishwasher over there and that kind of stuff. Now I will give you one other piece of advice. I have a water heater timer and the water heater timer you can have installed on your water heater now and you can shut off your water heater. Let's say uh, everyone goes to bed at nine o'clock. Well, you can shut off your water heater at 10 o'clock and then have it kick back on at 4 a.m. And so all night long, your water heater is off. They do make water heater timers. I'll, I have one in storage. I haven't installed it here, but I might is do it here. Is that water heater timer gonna save you a bunch of money? No, but there is a peace of mind that your water heater is not running 24 seven underneath the house when it's actually not needed. Let me hop over here real quick and I'm gonna show you this little teeny water heater and I'll show you those double faucets that I'm talking about. Here is the old water heater, which is actually brand new, almost never used. <laughs> so this is an A.O. Smith Signature Series and it's a 40 gallon and there's a heating element here and there's a heating element here. This is 3,800 watts, this is 3,800 watts. That's a big old tank to be sitting in here full of water and having to worry about draining. That's why I pulled that. Okay, so this is the inside of the cabin. It's, there's a lot of junk lying around here because, anyways, uh, so we did all, we finished this whole thing. We did all the finishing work. We sheetrocked it. We put up these 1870 beams in here from that Virginia tobacco barn. We have a sink, we have a microwave, we have a refrigerator, air conditioner unit, 1800s, 1820 table. Isn't that cool? This is actually a queen size bed this cabinet and then we put in a full-size bath which actually I kind of use as my eco flow center so I'll do be doing a video on this by the way so I have a sink I have a toilet and then we have a shower okay so I have a rain or I guess you call it what a raindrop shower rain head shower and then it has this little handle but this is what I'm talking about I have the ability even if these knobs are backwards I have the ability to turn on water so I can turn this on let me switch it over. I'm going to switch it over to this little handle thing. So I have the ability to have this water come out slow or faster. Got it? So I can, I can change this. I can just barely have it drip out. And as soon as I turn this water on, here's the heater right here. So my water heater used to fill up this entire space. Now I actually have, I'm gonna put some shelves in here and I actually have shelves. I forgot I had a plug in here. But you can see this is on right now. And they can feel hot water coming out. And that's, that's hot. Now, when I increase this flow, if I turn this flow all the way up, it's spending less time in here. It's moving quicker through here. So it's not going to be as hot. So now it's like very warm. Got it? If I tone this down, let me turn it down. And now it's going to get really hot. Now if I turn the rain head on at that level, let's see, is that enough to take a shower? And believe it or not, that's actually enough to take a shower at that level. I'm surprised. And it's it's very warm. I mean, it's well, now it's hot. <laughs> so I hope I've made that kind of clear. And I want you to watch. Watch how fast this comes on, okay? I'm going to turn the water on right now. See how it comes on? Shuts off. Comes on. Shuts off. And what's interesting is when it kicks on, I can see the lights just do a little dim because it's 8,000 watts. I'm pulling 8,000 watts. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people don't understand. So what I had to do here is, we had to take the water, this is water heater right here. This was a 30, we had to put in a 40 amp breaker in here. So if you had, 
let's say you went up to um, 11,000, the, the 2.5, you'd have to put a 50 amp breaker in. If you went up to the uh, 3.5 gallon, you'd have to get two of these 40s and put a 40 and put a 40. And then, then you'd have enough power to actually power mm -hmm. that thing. But that's 13,000 watts. That's a lot of watts. So I th really think that that wattage is something that comes in. Now, where this really comes in nice is a supplement. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have one water heater. Let's say you have one water heater for your entire house. <laughs> and like my house, the water heater is down here in the kitchen. And then the, the master bedroom is way down the other end of the house. And you got to sit there and let the hot water run forever and ever and ever. Not a bad idea maybe to have, um, to see if you can have one of these small units put in, in that bathroom down there to see if it can, if it can power just that one bathroom instead of having to rely on the water heater, the water heater that's way down the other end of the house. Okay, so where did I end up in this process, my whole process over the past two years? Down at the beach house, I decided not to put in an instant hot water heater for two reasons. Number one, my panel was really full and I didn't feel like messing with moving a whole bunch of uh, breakers around. But also, it's at the beach and we have hurricanes and we lose power a lot. And I would have to put in one that pulled at least 13,000, if not 18,000 watts. And I'm like, that's way too much. I use a smaller generator down there and so I left it. My water heater is only pulling 3,800 or 4,000 watts. I can run that off a generator. I can't run this instant one off a generator that I have down there. So I did not put one down there. In this house, same thing. Uh, I'd have to have probably, geez, close to probably like 18,000 watts being pulled to supply this whole house comfortably with hot water and I'm not gonna do that. So I wanna be able to run my backup battery systems and my generator systems. Again, you're talking 4,000 watts on a standard water heater versus 11 or versus 13,000 to 18,000 watts. You can literally see when that water heater kicks on, there's a lot of times you actually see the limb, the, the lights in your house sort of dim down a little bit. It's a bunch of wattage. Over here, it's a great application. If you have a smaller place, if you have a little cabin, if you have a little whatever, these things work really well. Or if you're not worried about backup systems, then they work really well. So that's where I ended up. I ended up putting one over here and I'm absolutely thrilled with that because now I'm telling you, last winter we got down to like 16 degrees for a whole week and I was really worried about that water heat, all that plumbing over there and watering over there. I will put if you're interested in one of these, I will put a link down below. I'll, I'll find some on a page. And what I'll do is I'll probably put the three different units. I'll put the amount of watts that they use, the GPM that they use, and the breakers that are required for it. I'll put it on that page. Don't forget, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Talk to you later. I go take care of chickens. Doc.